Like many of you, the airplane that I learned to fly in didn't have a GPS in it. And I started by using pilotage and dead reckoning, but I needed a GPS. GPS is essential in today's aviation industry. So I bought a Garmin GDL69 and an iPad mini and downloaded the Garmin Pilot app. The Garmin Pilot app, although it's tricky to learn at first, has become an instrumental tool in my development as a student pilot and into my days as a certified pilot. So I'm making this video to kind of show you guys some tips and tricks and how to use the Garmin Pilot app to make your overall flight more safe and more enjoyable. So I have the Garmin Pilot app pulled up on my iPad mini here. Now I normally use my an iPad mini attached to a kneeboard in the cockpit and I have my uh, pilot's license and my medical certificate in a little like business card holder and the knee pad so that way I've got a lot of the documents that I need right here on me when I fly. Now starting we can look at the map function. I currently have a VFR chart pulled up. That's typically what I navigate with just so that way I can quickly glance at the airport information, the different frequencies, airspaces, stuff like that. Uh, this map is how I was trained, you know, what I was trained on so that's currently what I use. Now this is fully customizable here in the map and chart section. So you have different maps and charts. You have helicopter overlays and IFR charts that you can choose. But I just prefer the simple VFR map. Now you also have radar overlays <clears throat> and stuff like that. So see, we're, it's currently raining on me right now. So Here's the current radar. This is completely off of the internet, but it's kind of cool to look at your current radar situation in your trip planning. And then when it's time to fly, you can switch to FISB radar and that will go off of an ADS-B connection if whatever you're connected to is equipped. You have all sorts of other overlays that you can choose. I pretty much stick to radar, traffic, TFRs, and that's about it on my on my map. You can add other stuff, but then it starts to get really busy, and I don't really like that because the VFR map is busy enough. You can show different filters and, and all of that, and you can customize your radar, which is kind of interesting. I just leave it blank. You know, I leave the opacities as they are, but you can go through and customize this how you want. I will suggest um, you have your own ship that you can select here. You have to go with the fighter jet. Um, no matter what you're flying, it it makes, yeah, it just looks cooler, you know. Um, so that's what I do. That's about the only thing I've customized here. Oh, I do like the extended center lines. So when you're going to an airport, I'll show you in a second. It'll, it'll give you a good general path for if you're on the center line on final approach on the runway. And then here's some more settings that you can, you can adjust right there. Now you can push this button down here and this is where you can go between track up and north up and all of that. Um, if you pop this little arrow up at the bottom, it opens up a whole lot of other features. So typically I use widgets, which are just, which they're fully customizable. You can select which ones you want. But just for a quick glance at information and you don't even, you don't have to leave your map, which is handy. But you can also, I mean, you can view all sorts of good stuff. Pull up charts. I really like safe taxi diagrams. That is super helpful. Um, so this is Bolivar, my home airport. Um, and just all sorts of really good stuff. You know, sometimes I'll put traffic on here, which if you're connected to a uh, ADSB device, then you can view traffic en route. Uh, my GTN 650 works really well for that. So this is fully customizable. You even have, if your airplane doesn't have a GPS at all, you can pull this up. And when you go direct somewhere, let's see, let me go here. We'll come back to this, but um, add my origin airport, Bolivar. And we'll just go to Springfield as my destination. <clears throat> so now when I pull this up, you can see my magenta line. Uh, so you can navigate off of that, which is pretty handy. Moving on, you can go to airport information. Uh, you can change the airport that you want through here. So it automatically pulls up your uh, flight plans. You can quickly click on them. Uh, so here's Springfield. And there's just so much information. They updated this and added a ton of information. And it's 
I mean, super helpful. There is so much information at your disposal here. It's just fantastic. So this feature is great. It also keep, uh, keeps kind of a search history. So if you keep coming back, um, you can see I went to Kearney, Nebraska recently. So that was fun. But anyways, we can move on to charts. So you can, uh, if you have it loaded, it will automatically like recommend your charts for your origin and destination airport. But I also have some of my most frequent ones just saved here for quick reference so I can pull up all my instrument charts and I mean all sorts of good documents and stuff that you need and you can add them and and all of that through there like I said earlier if you have an ADSB in device then you can view the traffic on here which is especially helpful for navigating it just keeps you aware now, flight planning, you briefly saw earlier. Uh, I'm not at the airport, so I had to select an origin and a destination airport. You can add in route waypoints. And you can even, like, pre-select your approaches. So I can come here and select an approach. Say we want to do RNAV runway 20. I can load that approach. And then I can go to the map and you can see it's already pulled out my track uh, for the approach. Now it's set up weird because I actually have SGF as one of my uh, waypoints in the middle. So that's why it looks kind of strange. But you guys get the idea of the flight planning section. It even down here, it will show you your uh, how far it is, how long it's going to take, how much fuel it's going to take. And that's all determined by these figures down here at the bottom. You can customize it to your airplane. It also does a detailed nav log of all the different uh, waypoints and fixes and procedures that you're going to be going through. And it warns you about obstacles, terrains, if there's any uh, TFRs in the area, area, NOTAMs, stuff like that. It'll pop up there. Um, and you can even file from here. I've never done it, but my dad does sometimes. So he'll file completely from the Garmin app, which is pretty cool. And you have the trip planning feature, which is um, just a little more in-depth. So this is where you do a lot of your planning. Um, and then you, you see the file button over there. You can use the file for uh, to actually file the plan, get briefings all sorts of awesome stuff like that. And you can you can view your weight and balance. I'll, let me just skip to that really quickly. This weight and balance is awesome. It's kind of a pain to get the data inputted from your POH, but once you get it in, it's just fantastic. You can just add and subtract different weights, how you're looking. You see it'll warn you when, it, when you're out of CG or over, um, if you're overweight. It'll pop up and warn you. So this is just a super cool feature for uh, making sure you're safe. I mean, no more do you have to do weight and balance calculations. You do it once, you put the information in, and and you're good. You're good to go. So it's it's pretty awesome. And also, let's take the time to talk about how much of a beast the Dakota is because we're currently at 2,893 pounds. I was... I think I was at like 2,803 pounds maybe at going to Oshkosh. And she flew just great. This thing's an amazing airplane. Anyways, I got sidetracked. So we can go back to weather imagery. All different types of charts about different regions. And it's super handy. I mean, it's like this app is like a one-stop shop for all your flight planning, which is super helpful. This is where you can go to manage your Bluetooth devices, whether you're connected to a GPS in the airplane, to a transponder, to a uh, portable GPS. There's all sorts of good stuff here. And you can set up your XM and stuff like that. You have a scratch pad here, which I don't really use. You can do a blank page, but you can see how, like how thick it is. So when it comes time to write in here, I mean, it's just, it's too fat. So you could probably, you probably have to choose a smaller pen and get a stylus. I just prefer to use paper. You have a terrain map here. So based off your altitude, 
you know, I'm on the ground, so obviously it's going to be all red, but the higher up you go, it'll change colors and warn you of different obstacles. You have synthetic vision, so if you have an aircraft that that's capable of this, it'll show you, you know, kind of an attitude indicator and all of that. Please don't use this for flying IFR, but it's there. It's just kind of cool to look at and play around with. The app will also track logbook entries. So you can see the last one it tracked was going to Oshkosh from Portage. It'll go through and automatically fill a lot of stuff in, and then you, you can accept or delete the logbook entry. So it's probably not a replacement to a paper logbook, but it's a nice supplement, you know, a nice backup if you happen to lose your logbook or something. The only thing I will complain about is that my dad and I both share an account, and all these are both of our logbook entries, so you kind of have to filter through them. Kind of a neat feature. I don't use it, but it could be neat. We talked about weight and balance. Let's go to checklists. I made this checklist a while ago and I don't really use it. I still prefer to use a paper checklist, but it's here if you need it. So you can go through and check all the different things off. Clear all, you know, it's got a button to check the next item. Good stuff like that. So it's got all sorts of different checklists that you can go through. Kind of a cool way to do it, but I just don't use it. Uh, you can come here to the downloads. This is super important. Before you fly, you should check and make sure that everything's up to date. You can you can choose and select which files you want to download. You know, I don't fly IFR or helicopters, so I obviously don't have those. But I've got, you know, different types of charts in different regions and stuff like that. I will highly recommend the Safe Taxi. Um, it's super handy for flying in complicated airports on the ground. Here you have settings where you can just do more uh, customization to yourself. You can add profiles, add aircrafts, um, stuff like that. I won't get too detailed in. You can hook this up to Flight Simulator, which I don't have yet, but if I do get it, it will be awesome, and I will use this app for it. Last thing we'll cover is documents. I actually, I think for my check ride, I saved a copy of the FARs in here in case I needed to reference it. I don't really use it a whole lot. I know I do have a checklist in here somewhere, unless it's here. Oh yeah, it's in the cloud. But yeah, so this is my current checklist that I use. I fold it in half. I have it laminated. So standard operating procedures are on the left side, which will be on the front when you fold it. Any emergency stuff will be on the back um and it's all color coded so it's uh it works pretty good i just made this in excel if you guys have a dakota and want this checklist um, i can send it to you just reach out to me but yeah that just about sums up the garmin pilot app it's very in-depth you can use as much or as little of it as you want you know and you can customize different areas to how you like it it's an excellent supplement to uh, the instruments that I have in the airplane. Like I said earlier, when I first started flying, I, I only used this, but now it's, it's a great supp supplement and it allows me to view information uh, very easily. And I also don't have to disturb the GPS in the airplane. So like if I need to get a frequency, I just look it up on my iPad instead of digging through the uh, GTN 650 looking for the airport frequency. So it's super helpful. It alleviates a lot of my workload and really helps out. So this concludes my tutorial video on how to use the Garmin Pilot app. I hope you guys learned something and we'll catch you guys in the next video.